All right, we'll go ahead and get started here. How's everyone doing today? Pretty good, pretty good. Everybody enjoying the, uh, I guess actually this is the second day with the workshops uh, of uh, WordCamp. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, uh, just kind of start out here. Um, just give you an idea of what the talk's going to be. Um, it's going to be about overcoming your fear of sales and networking. It's going to be kind of uh, driven more towards people who are introverted, um, you know, people who are not big fans of large crowds or can't walk into a crowd and just, <laughs> you know, be um, uh, just walk into a crowd and be social, right? It's always a little harder. Um, and the reason I, uh, just kind of real quick, the reason I wrote this talk was, you know, I was a freelancer. I had to learn. I was one of those people who walked in and went and found the corner, found one person I knew and stood over there the whole time and never talked to anybody. Well, I wasn't going to grow my business that way. And so I had to learn how to talk to people and how to do sales when, frankly, I didn't want to be near anybody and talk to people. It kind of scared me. So that's kind of what this talk's going to be about. So first off, I'm Chris Edwards. Um, I am from Orlando, Florida. I've uh, been a website developer for 19 years, WordPress developer for seven, SEO 12 years. Um, and then I do, I started out freelance, uh, now own an agency with my wife. We've got a couple employees um, out of Orlando called Data Driven Labs, uh, where we do WordPress analytics, things such as that, um, and digital marketing. Um, I'm also a GoDaddy Pro ambassador for the GoDaddy Pro product um, as well, which is something we use in our business. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can follow me at Chris Edwards CE. Um, I tweet out marketing stuff mostly, um, so feel free to follow me. I don't tweet that much, but every once in a while when I find something really cool that I want to share with people, I do send it out there. Okay, so for today's talk, i uh, kind of give you a little bit of an outline of what we're going to be talking about. So we're going to kind of go through, first off, the mentality that you need to have, uh, then followed by... Um, where we're going to talk about knowing your limits, um, how to start the conversation, and then how to turn that conversation into a sales conversation to sell a product, and even how to close that deal. Um, and then at the end, we're going to kind of go through and we're going to talk about sales tools and, and such. Um, if you can hold questions to the end, that'd be great. If you do have a you know, really uh, big question you want to try to ask, feel free to raise your hand and uh, we'll try to answer it. Okay, so... Let's start off first with the mindset, right? Um, everybody, when you say a sale, you know, you're like, oh, well, let's talk about a salesperson, right? Um, or you're going to talk to sales. Everyone starts to kind of think of that car salesman like kind of person. It's like that. He's gonna, he doesn't care about you. He just wants to walk in. He's going to sell you a car, whatever it takes. He's going to, you know, pressure you into it and everything. And what we want to do is we want to keep that mindset because if you have that mindset, especially if you're an introvert, a lot of times uh, as an introvert, you're, you're kind of a little bit more about you don't want to chase people off. You don't want to scare people. Um, you want to please people. And so the idea is instantly you're turned away from sales because you're like, I'm not that kind of person. I don't want to get involved. I don't want to walk up and be like, take this, buy this, do this. You're just not that kind of person. And so you, when you start to think of sales, you start to think of that car salesman type of attitude. And that's actually not the mindset that you need to have going into this. Instead, what you got to do is um, you're going to really look at it as your consulting, right? So instead of focusing on selling, you want to focus kind of more on consulting. Uh, you're, you're, you're there to help them, uh, not sell a product. So this is the first big thing to come in because naturally, if you go in with a sales mentality of just push, 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 you're going to really be scared of having those conversations. You're not going to want to have that conversation with people. And, and it's going to really make you uncomfortable, which then is going to make it very hard to make a sale, right? So one of the biggest things I always like to say is go in there and just be yourself. Help them. You're an expert in what you do. That's why you do it for a living. So go up and just talk to them and just be helpful. And, and don't, don't, don't think about selling them a product. That's something that can come later. We can talk about that later with them. Just find out and just, just be there to help. And if you have that mentality that you're just helping people, that you're not trying to sell things, you're not trying to do any of that, it's going to make it a lot easier to go in there because you're not going to be nervous. You're not going to be thinking, oh, am I going to, am I not going to, I'm not going to sell something, which is kind of where we go to our next point, right? Rejection, it happens, right? It's real. You don't need to worry about it. Um, I often look at it as a way, 
to learn from it, right? Um, people aren't always going to want what you're selling, right? So if you come in with a mentality to help them, you're not sitting here worried about, oh, do they want to buy what I'm selling? Um, and you're not worried about that rejection because you're just there to help. You're there to do what, you know, help them out with what they need. Um, it's going to really help you uh, build that relationship and get closer, right? So just kind of remember, I say remember, um, I heard this from, oh, I forget which, it was another word camp. Uh, someone, someone said, remember, every rejection is one step closer to a yes. Um, and so, and I, and I enjoyed that uh, quote because it was really, it kind of told me, you know, that's true. When you're talking to somebody and they say, I'm not interested, I don't want that. Um, it really kind of helps you understand, okay, well, they didn't want it. Let's we get, move on to the next person who may want that product. Or it helps you understand what they may really want. And then maybe you can talk to them about a service you have for that. Um, and then just kind of remember, this is a relationship building thing, right? Um, you're not going to just walk in. Uh, this isn't a, okay, I got five minutes to make a sale and I got to move on. This is gonna. You, you want to focus on building that relationship with somebody. It's. It's. You're not gonna close every single cell on the first encounter. It may take multiple encounters. But instead, you want to just work on building a relationship. And it's gonna be a little bit easier if you walk in to a conversation with somebody, and you are in that mindset that I'm gonna help them. You're not worried about that rejection, right? And then you're not sitting here just instantly like, yeah, 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 yeah it's great, it's great, it's great. Hey, buy my stuff, right? They're not going. They're gonna be like, whoa. You know, moving a little too quick there. So instead, just sit there and just talk to them. Build a solid relationship with those people. Um, and just really get to know what they're looking for and understand. And just focus on the relationship aspect, not the sales aspect. And then know your limit. Uh, don't overwhelm yourself. Um, this is a big one for me. Uh, it's actually kind of funny um, because um, you'll, you'll see this. If you know me, you'll see this happen all the time. But... Uh, we'll, we'll kind of dive into what I mean by that. So first, group size. This is uh, this is one of those I always say it, it could be one or the other, right? For different, uh, depending what kind of personality type you are, you may be somebody who's more comfortable talking to just one on one with people, or you may be some and, and, and get intimidated if there's like five or six people right there. You might start to get a little more intimidated, um, like me speaking to like 35, 40 of you. Um, <laughs> But, uh, it, you know, it might be a little intimidating, right? Or you might thrive on that. It might be easier for you to talk to a larger group or insert yourself if you see a group of, like, three or four people at a networking event, right? Um, you see three or four people standing over here to just join in with that because then you don't have to completely lead on the conversation. Um, don't over – if you know that a certain one intimidates you more than the other, don't put yourself in that position because once you get intimidated, once you start to feel – um, uncomfortable. It's really, really hard to go back and, you know, come back from that. Um, it's going to be you're going to become overwhelmed. You're not going. Your mind's not going to be clear. You're not going to be able to sell your product. You're not going to be able to show um, that you're an expert in your field because you're going to be too busy thinking about, you know, you know, just being intimidated by the whole situation, right? Um, so, what I like to do is. Focus on a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody, or if you are the group person, focus on having that group, and then learn about the different people through that group, and then focus on a one-on-one -on -one conversation to start that conversation for sales. So this is the big one. If you know me, you see me at WordCamps, you'll see there will be a point where you just don't see me for a little while. Uh, take breaks, right? Uh, when you need to take a break, uh, you'll know it. You're going to be overwhelmed. You're going to hit a point where you can't really... You know, think what's going on. You're just you're just way overwhelmed with everything going on. Go take a break. Um, I know that uh, last year, WordCamp US, this this happened to me with the large room with everybody there. I was running around, I was talking to everybody and everything. And then my wife was there as well with me. She's an extrovert. Um, we'll actually talk about that in a little bit here, but uh, and how that can work for your advantage. Um, but uh, she's just she's loving it. She's loving all these people. She's like, this is awesome. And she's getting me into all these conversations. We're talking to everybody. And then I come up to her and say, I'm going to disappear for about an hour. I'll be back. And so I went back to the hotel, went, down, went sat down just by the window, worked on a few things on my computer, and just silence, the silent place. Maybe you can't go back to the hotel. Maybe it's just finding a nice, quiet place. 
uh, here, for example, tons. Oh, I love this place. There's so many di different seats. There's another level you can sneak down to and hide if you want to. Uh, you can just kind of find a place just to kind of get away, even if it's in a large networking event, finding a room that you can step out to, or just going outside and just walking around for a second. If you need to collect your mind, do that. Because if you don't do that, you're going to have a very unclear mind. You're going to be going into this super nervous, and you're going to people are going to see that. And you're not going to be able to show that you're an expert in that field. You're not going to be able to show, hey, I know what I'm talking about, if in your mind you've got 20 other thoughts running through your head while you're trying to have that conversation with people. So just find a quiet place, recharge, take a minute, grab some water or something, and just, just sit back and just, you know, take a rest. Speaking of water, I got to <laughs> grab a little bit here. Um, so kind of along those same lines, I also want to talk about pacing yourself, right? So similar to taking a break. Uh, when you have a conversation with somebody, you don't want to just, you know, now like my wife, she just, she'll be still talking to this person and starting her second conversation with another person. How she does that, I don't know. But take a break between people. Figure out how much time you need between to reset between each conversation that you've had with people, right? Um, so what I like to do is, after I talk to one person, I like to go ahead and take a step back, think about what I just talked to them about, maybe write some notes down about them, um, and make sure that I just kind of take a minute to fully understand what I just had a conversation about, and then I move over to the next person, right? And then I go ahead and start that conversation with that person. And I, I make sure I have a little bit of time in between. I know where I'm, I know, and that's where I can assess, do I need a break? Do I need to take a break? You know, where to, what, who am I gonna talk to next? You know, just take a minute to really clear your mind before jumping into that next conversation. And it's gonna make it a lot easier. Uh, another one, this is a big one I like to use, um, split the room. And uh, this is an interesting, because uh, I've told this to a few people that are extrovert salespeople. I'm like, what do you mean split the room? I see the room and I just go. And I'm like, yeah, not me. I see the room and I go, whoa, no, 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 let's, let's not do this. <laughs> so what I like to do is kind of take the room and go, all right, let's, 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 let's divide this room into, into force. And I'm really gonna just pretend, I'm just gonna look over and focus on this section of the room for now. I'm not gonna even pay attention to what's going on around here because there's too many people here. And it's gonna be very intimidating to just walk in and be like, oh wow, you know, and just try to, oh, where do I go? Who do I try and talk to? What's going on? I just like to come on, kind of go over and figure out, you know, this is the only area I'm, I'm focusing on. It makes it a little easier. Uh, and that can also be the area that only has a couple people in it if you want. Make sure there's no, if, if you go to the section that has no people, then you're not really doing it right there. So you need to at least make sure there's some people in that section, right? All right. So this is where we're going to kind of get more into, that's kind of the mentality, I think, and kind of how, you know, I like to make sure that I don't get overwhelmed when I'm in those situations. Now, how I start those conversations. So I told you we're going to talk about my wife here. Good things, don't, don't, don't tell her say anything bad, right? Uh, first, get a wingman or a wing woman, right? Get somebody who can help you. Um, the easiest way to start a conversation is actually to have somebody else do it for you, right? Um, finding good leads, sending them over to your way. Um, we do this, uh, my wife, she goes around and she talks, like I said, to everyone in the room. And she goes and finds all the people, she qualifies them and then she brings them over and says, let me introduce you to Chris, Chris, Chris works with us, you know, as well. Let me, he can tell you a little bit more on the technical side about what he does. And so she's kind of pre, uh, pre-talked to everybody, found out people who may be interested in having more of a conversation, and then she brings them over to me. And then at that point, it's a little easier because they were brought to me, but I didn't have to try to find that conversation. And this doesn't have to be a significant other. This could be a friend, business partner. partner. Another one that we found recently worked out really well for us was complimentary business connections. And I've, that's a word I made up because I couldn't really figure out what to call them, right? Um, so we did a lot of stuff with our local chamber and going to a lot of local chamber events. And um, that one was a really interesting one because people not only with uh, being an introvert was it a little difficult, but everyone was very close circled there too. Like everyone's like, no, 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 you can't come talk to us yet. You haven't been here long enough. And so what we found was we actually ended up talking with a, uh, print, a print marketing company. They didn't do digital marketing. 
And so what it ended up being is we are very, and I don't do print marketing, uh, but we do digital marketing. But both are needed for a successful marketing campaign for a business. And so instead what they would do is they'd bring us in on conversations and be like, well, let's talk about your marketing in general. And then they would introduce us and say, you know, this is, this is Data Driven Labs. They do uh, digital marketing as well as we help you with your print marketing sign. And we, together we can come up with a whole marketing plan. And they were able to help bring us in. So that's kind of what I mean by complementary business connections. Find other people that may do stuff that can complement your service or your product and work with them to help start those conversations and bring those conversations in. Um, where's my other part? Oh yeah, and then um, anyone else who's willing just to do it for you. You may actually just find, meet somebody who's like, you know, after talking to somebody and they're like, oh yeah, 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 you know what, I know like five people that, that were asking me earlier that I talked to, you know, this is that extrovert that's running around meeting everybody, right? My wife does this for people. She'll go to different booths out at a word camp, talk to all these people, and then bring people back to all these different booths. I'm like, you need to figure out how to get commission from these people. Um, <laughs> but she goes out and she starts selling everybody's product, right? Um, because she starts talking to people and she's like, well, I don't, I, I know somebody. So just find anybody who, you know, you know, if you, that's part of that going out and talking and networking with people. You're going to meet people that are going to help bring business to you just to help you out because they may say, I don't do that. Oh, you're looking for analytics services. I don't do analytics services, but I know somebody who does. Um, so that's kind of the really cool, uh, um, that's kind of the whole idea with, like, say, the wingman, uh, you know, using somebody to help you bring that in. Now, you're not always going to have that available. So there's a couple different things I like to do. First, make them come to you. So this is another really easy one. Well, it's a little hard, but a little easy, right? Uh, so one of the cool things you can do is uh, instead of trying to go walk up to somebody, become that, like, uh, how do I write it in here? The thing you're good at, guy or girl, right? So one of the things I do, I give a lot of talks on analytics. Um, I, I, I'm an analytics nerd. A lot of times when I go to different camps, I actually have people come up to me and go, hey, you're that analytics guy, right? And I'm like, sure, uh, <laughs> I guess so. Right, and, and, and so how do you get to there? There's different ways. One of the things is kind of doing what I'm doing right now, giving talks. Uh, Bruce is gonna fall on me. Uh, <laughs> giving talks about uh, the subjects that you know, right? So everybody here, like I said again, you're an expert in your field. You really know what you're doing, right? So why not stand up and just talk about it? It's really easy to talk about something you know in depth. Um, you can get me onto an analytics talk um, and I've had to be, uh, I've had where they said, oh, you got an extra, you know, hour and a half. I'm an hour and a half in and, you know, I've got the moderator tell me, you gotta, you gotta end it, you gotta end it. Because it's something I know. It's something I really, really love to do. I'm passionate about it. And so it's one of those talks that because I know it, it's something I can easily talk about and I can answer questions all day long on it. Well, by doing that, once you walk out in the hallway and you're walking around the event, you're going to have people coming up to you and going, hey, I, I want you to talk. I've actually had people come up to me who were like, hey, I was in your talk. And I'm like, I didn't give a talk at this event. They're like, no, no, it was like a year and a half ago. Oh, okay, that's cool. I have no idea when that was, but that's awesome, right? And so it, once you start to give some of those talks, people start to know you. Another way, which is a really easy way, um, and I do this a lot at the, um, when I do like a networking event or I go to like a chamber event on my name tag, instead of just writing my name, I write, ask me about, and I put in like, so uh, when we're doing like one with the small business chamber, I'll say, ask me about uh, digital marketing. Um, and then you get a lot of people, because what a lot of people do is they just write their name on their name tag. But by adding the ask me about, now when people just see you, they go, oh yeah, I, I was thinking about doing something with that. I'm gonna go talk to this guy, right? And then mention it in your introduction. Uh, if you have a, a a lot of times you get to introduce yourself at different networking events or just they give you a quick little time just to say who you are. Um, rather than just going, hi, my name is Chris. I work at uh, Day Driven Labs. That means nothing to people, right? Instead, you don't have to even give them your job title. Say what you do at that job, right? Um, so instead of coming in, I can say, hi, I'm Chris. You know, I'm co-owner of Day Driven Labs. 
That doesn't really tell you anything. But instead, I can come in and go, hi, I'm Chris. Um, I do analytics and digital marketing for uh, data-driven ma data -driven labs. So yes, I didn't give you my title, but now you know exactly what I do because I put the service in there. I told you what I do in that introduction, um, and because a lot of places don't allow you to say much more than that, uh, if it's like one of those places that want a lot of introductions. And so that way you kind of get that out there. Same thing, you can do that even with your name tag. If you're not allowed to ask me about, but you can write your title, just write that on there. Um, and then the other thing I like to do, um, and you'll see this at different camps, is wear something unique. Um, we've seen people who've done, they've had different color hair, um, they've done uh, really funky hats. Um, they, they, they have something that makes them stand out, uh, that makes people want to come up to have a conversation. One of the things I do is I go to a lot of camps and I collect these little guys. They're the Wapoos. Uh, I think there's a couple of them out here that you can find. Uh, but a lot of camps make these little Wapoos. And I've got one from, I got one from Japan on here. I've got one from, I got one from all different uh, word camps all over. And I've got about three times this, this in my backpack or at home. And so I have all these different ones. My wife actually has gone to the route that she actually has like a triple lanyard. And she wears all these. But I have back problems. I'm not going to wear <laughs> that much weight on my neck, right? But it causes, it, it gets people to come up. I can tell you already at this camp, uh, there may be a few of you in this room that actually have come up to me and asked me about some of these that are on my lanyard. That's actually a tactic that I use to get people to come in here and talk with me. Um, because by that, you started that conversation with me. I didn't have to go and try and start that conversation. And it's an easy conversation for me to have. I'm like, oh yeah, I got this one. This is from WordCamp Orlando in 2015. And I can start kind of talking about that. And then it can transition into, so, you know, what do you do? And then it turns into a conversation. And then that's how we've got our conversation started. Um, all right, so this one, this one's a little creepy. So I was like, not sure how to put it in here. Uh, it sounds really bad, but it does work, right? Um, eavesdrop. And I don't mean... Like, uh, how do I mean this, right? Um, <laughs> there's conversations happening all around you. And so when you're at an event, kind of keep your ears open and see what, what people are talking about. Because every once in a while, you'll overhear people uh, having a conversation about something that you may actually know. And you may overhear them going, yeah, I don't know how that works. And I've actually heard like two people going, yeah, I, I have no idea. And if you feel, you make sure it's right. Don't let's walk in on someone's conversation. But you can go, actually, I can help you with that. I actually know a little bit about that. And you can walk in and kind of get into the conversation. Um, that's worked a lot. And, and it's one of those things that a networking event, it's OK. Uh, there are certain places maybe you shouldn't eavesdrop on people. But uh, most places, like in a networking event, it's usually OK to kind of hear. Or it could even be that you hear a conversation happening over here you can listen and kind of get an idea of what certain people are talking about and then later on go and find that person and have that conversation with that person because you know that was something that they were having a, a, a talk about earlier with somebody else and you can say, hey, I want to go back to that person and have that conversation. So that's one that I uh, like to use as well to get things started. And then <laughs> the basic one, just approach somebody. Um, they're not going to bite you, at least I hope not. Um, I haven't been to an event yet that someone's bit me. Uh, if it happens at this camp, well, it might be a little weird. But uh, <laughs> I've not. nobody's going to bite your head off. Nobody's going to yell at you. It's, it's natural for people to just come up and talk at one of these events. That's why they call them networking events, right? Um, and, and every event you go to, even, even a WordCamp, right, this is a networking. Everybody's here talking to each other, learning from each other. It's natural for someone to just come up and talk to you who doesn't know you, right? So find a way to just go up. Have a conversation with people and just start talking with them, right? And just start finding out, you know, um, well, you know, just, 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 just start that that relationship building process, right? Because I think that's the key is with the conversation piece. Before you start selling, you want to just really build that relationship, and then that's when we can kind of start selling. Um, so how do we do that, right? Biggest way. And this is the biggest thing. Um, and that say actually makes the difference between a, 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 car sales, a car salesperson and anyone else, right? You need to listen. Uh, hear what they have to say. 
um, instead of talking to them and telling them what you want them to do, because you're, remember, you're there to help, right? You're, you're not there to just sell a product, you're there to help. So you wanna hear what their problem is, hear, hear what's going on with them. Listen for like different key points that uh, you can use later that you might be able to help them with, and don't immediately jump into trying to sell, sell something to them. Hear what they have, ask more questions to dive deeper and to dig a little bit deeper into what they're, they're asking. And then you wanna identify some pain points. Um, so this is where, <clears throat> when you're talking to them, you're gonna hear, they're usually, what I have found when you're talking to someone, when there's a pain point, they go back to that pain point two or three times. They keep, they, 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 they pass it and they come back to it. And so you'll start to hear those, if you listen long enough to what they have to say, you'll start to really understand where they're having issues. Um, this is kind of going back to, you know, buying any product. If you walk in and you're looking to buy, you know, you just, you walk into a store and you're looking to buy a soda and someone's trying to sell you a sandwich, you're like, I was here to buy the soda. I'm not really sure I want that. This is kind of where the pain points come. You want to make sure that you can identify what they're looking for first. Um, and then with that, that's where you can then offer them a real solution. And notice I didn't say a product here. I said, you wanna offer them a solution. And this is, this is where we come in and we say, you know what, based off your pain points, this is where you're having the most issues that I can see. This is what I would tell you that you should do. This, if, if I were you, this is how I would fix those problems. And then you kind of go through those, and those can be your products, but you're presenting it in a solutions type of form to them. You're not just coming straight off and saying, um, okay, cool, so your biggest problem is that you just don't have time to get in and update your, your, your website. Um, that's great. Uh, here, I have a maintenance package you should buy. Instead of doing that and go, you know, tell them, you know, hey, I understand, so you're telling me your issues going into your website, you're having a lot, of, you know, you're not able to get all the updates in there. What if you had a, what if there was somebody who could do that for you? Um, what it, do you have some, you know, could, is there somebody else you know who could go in and make those updates for you or have you worked with anybody who can make those kind of updates? And so that way it doesn't come off very salesy. You're, you're showing them, hey, listen, I have a solution for you and I'm not trying to sell you my product, I'm just offering you a solution. There's tons of people who can do this for you. I just wanna say maybe you should look into maybe using a service. Um, okay, yeah. And then with that, you also want to set, uh, sell the value, right? So you need to focus on that value of why they're trying to, why they should, because this is where you start transition and talk a little bit about your product, right? So this is where you're talking about your maintenance, uh, for an, an example we gave. And you're talking about your maintenance packages or whatnot. And so you wanna give them the value of why it makes more sense to pay for somebody to do that for them. Uh, and this is where you can use things like ROI. Help them understand what their ROI, their return on investment can be for using uh, a service or using your product to, to help them with this type of uh, uh, service, or with, with you, what you're working on. Don't talk pricing though. Um, I think that's going a little too far right then. You just really wanna just kinda just talk about the value of using that. Um, a good example is, uh, going back with the maintenance stuff, I've had people tell me, um, that, well, I could just, you know, I could go in, log in, update my own websites. And it's like, okay, well, that's great. Uh, are you updating them on a daily basis? I've had people tell me, well, I've got multiple websites, and why can't I just update them? There's, I mean, there's tools out there you can do that. Uh, go to the pros one, right? You can actually just, they can uh, sign up for that, and they can update all their stuff. And you're like, well, why, why wouldn't I just use one of those tools? As a matter of fact, we even use that tool to update our sites. Why couldn't I use that tool to run all my updates? And my thing is I come back and say, well, here's the difference. Yes, you gotta log in daily. Um, and you gotta, you gotta do that. But what happens when it breaks? What happens when an update doesn't take? Do you know how to troubleshoot that? Have you worked on that? Uh, are you actually logging in <laughs> on a daily basis to do that or do you forget and then realize, you know, four months down the road when a big security vulnerability comes out and post it on CNN, and you're like, oh, yeah, I haven't updated my site in four months, I forgot to log in and do that. 
you know, are you actually making sure all that happens? Because that's what our service does. And our service has this value. We come in and we, we have somebody who logs in daily and they, they take care of you and they make sure all this is happening. If something's not right, they'll reach out to you. What you're doing is you're selling the value of the product now. You're saying, yes, you can do this on your own and there's tools to do this. And those tools will work, they will help you. But what we're telling you is you're hiring not just a tool, but you're hiring a person. There's a value to using um, our service. And you can do this with any product. You know, Even if you're hosting a hosting product or you are a website um, developer, this is where you can come in and say, you know, look, with our websites, we do this, this, and this. And this is what makes us stand out from our competitor. And this is why there's value in working with us. And this is the kind of uh, return on your investment you can see uh, one of the things we do. All websites that you build with us, we, you know, we, I've been doing conversion rate optimization, A-B testing, analytics. So when your site comes up, it's going to have full-blown analytics in it. It's going to be conversion rate optimized. It's going to be built to best practices based off of lots of A-B tests that we have done over many years. And this is why I come to them and say, so here's the value. You're not just getting a website from us, but you're getting a website that's going to increase your conversions. It's going to increase your sales. It's going to increase your leads and hopefully increase your revenue. And, and so there's a value to buying our service. And I still haven't at this point talked price. I haven't even said what we charge because that's a whole different discussion that we want to have down the road. I just want them to at least be interested in working with me. And then, yeah, we're back to it again. It's time to listen again. Because once you've talked about all this, they're going to come back and then they're going to, they're going to restate um, they're going to restate their issues and they're going to talk about what you just talked about. And you may find out that some of the stuff that you just offered isn't what they actually wanted. And this is where you need to listen again because they're going to really help refine what they need. Um, the biggest thing I say when you go into sales, don't sell people something that they don't want. If you're going to sell somebody something they don't, uh, uh, some, an item they don't want, they're not going to convert. They're, they're going to run away. Instead, hear what they have to say, know what they want, and come in with a, I want to help you. And, and, that, and, that, and I'm not saying just tell them you want to help them, but actually have that as your actual attitude. Make sure you're coming in to help people and that you're just there to take care of them and make a little money along the way, but that you're going to be there just to take care of them. And I think that's the biggest key um, that we've found, and it's about that relationship. All of our clients trust us. We have a lot of clients that have actually told us, you know what, just tell us what we need because we know that you're not going to just throw things in there. And then we don't. Uh, we've actually had clients before that we've gone to them and said, look, this strategy is not working. We want to switch to this strategy. And they're like, well, that means you're getting less money a month. And I'm like, yes, but I don't want you throwing your money away on this thing that doesn't work. And it helped to build that trust. That client stayed with us for a very long time because uh, they're still with us. But... They stayed with us because they trusted us. They knew that, hey, we're looking out for them. We're looking out for their bottom dollar. I tell people, I, I'm going to treat your company as if it's my own company with the marketing. I'm not going to just waste your money. And if you build that trust in that relationship, and you can do that through these conversations, they're going to trust you a whole lot more, and they're going to want to do business with you. All right, so then get their contact info. And I don't mean hand them your business card. Um, a lot of people will ask, hey, do you have a, a, um, a business card or do you have any, uh, any way I can contact you? And they'll say, well, just give me, or they'll, they'll say, I don't have any business cards printed up um, or I don't have them on me. Can you just give me your business card? If they tell you that, see if you can write down, see if you can get their information to write, that, write it down. Um, this is one of those biggest things that I like to uh, really focus on because what we have found is if you hand a business card to somebody, the likelihood that they're ever going to call you uh, is very low because they're going to forget about it. It's going to go through the wash. They're going to forget about you know who you were. Instead, if you get their card, you can go back and you can follow up with them, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and then the other thing I do is I don't just collect their contact info. I take notes on them on, right onto their business card. So I'll carry a pen and I'll turn around and after, it, either while I'm talking to them, but usually it's right after I talk to them when I turn around and I'm talking about that little break you take between going from person to person, I'll turn around and write a couple key words down that I know is going to help me later that night when I go put them into my CRM, which we'll talk about as well. It's going to help me put some notes in so that when I actually have that call or I follow up with that person, 
I'm not just going, hi, I don't really remember who you are, but I met you at this last event or this one event. You got to rem remember, you may not be talking to these people again for a month later. You're not going to remember everybody as much as you think you are. And you're not going to remember every detail about them. But if you do remember the stuff that's really important, put it down. So I always put down kind of what they're looking for so I don't call them and start selling them a website when they were looking for an analytics package. I don't start selling them you know, F SEO when they were asking for PPC. I make sure that I write down what they were looking for and so that way I can come back and go, hey, we talked uh, about a month ago about PPC and they'll be like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, that's right. And I've actually had to call people and they're like, I don't remember what I talked to you about and then I have to remind them. Uh, so always take notes and I take them right onto the card. Uh, if you want to have a notebook, you can actually write their name and take the information down to a notebook. It's however you want to do it that's easiest for you. Um, like I said, for me, I always write it right onto the card, and then if they don't have that, I write down their information so I have it for later to contact them. I usually ask for just their name, email address, and phone number, um, and usually and then I take my own notes from that. So speaking of that, I then want to talk about following up, right? Um, this is a big step um, with any of those, with any leads. You need to make sure that you do follow up. And I'm not talking about just sending an email. And this is where the introvert side of me comes out, right? For me, I like to send an email and go, oh, they didn't reply. All right, whatever, right, and walk away. <laughs> I found that doesn't work. I found sometimes it takes multiple emails. They lose your email or whatever. They forget to reply. Um, but also make calls, and I mean that plural. Uh, make phone calls until you connect with them, um, and don't don't stop. And the reason I say phone calls is you initially talk to this person in person. Um, so having a conversation with them on the phone is going to be a lot easier than just uh, a, a lot more uh, formal than just sending an email to them. Uh, so that's one one of the things I'm like. You 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 can send an email now. If you send an email and they reply right away, um, then you can go go that route. They may be someone who likes to email back and forth. But make sure you try to make some calls uh, as well to try and follow up and do your best to try and get a hold of them if you can. Um, if you don't follow, uh, <coughs> yeah, so like with the following up, I don't immediately jump in to try and sell it as well. That's where I try to build a relationship. I don't jump in in my first initial email to them and say, hey, you were at this camp. Uh, here's my pricing. Let's, let's talk. I, I still come back to the, you know, hey, we talked about some of your, you know, re mention some of their pain points and say, and we talked about how we could use uh, this particular service, PPC. We can use PPC to help you, um, you know, build your business and get past that and, you know, kind of reach out to them more as, hey, I still just want to help you. Um, and so you can get that call and that conversation going so that you can then move on to actually, you know, presenting your pricing presenting your proposal to them, which we'll actually talk about some proposal tools here in a minute as well. And then don't walk away from a no. Um, and this is one that is more of a recent lesson for me. Uh, we actually just uh, were fortunate enough to be able to hire a uh, business development um, guy to do all of our sales for us. Um, so once we get a lead, we give them over to him. He goes ahead and gets has those initial conversations, relationship building, and then gets us on the line for the final piece to uh, talk to them and put together a proposal. One of the things I learned from him was the walking away from a no. What we often did is when someone said no or they said I'm not interested this time or anything like that, we took it as a rejection and we said, oh well, threw it out, moved on. And uh, we recently had this with a very large client who was looking for PPC for a, whole, uh, a bunch of different stores nationwide. And um, they came back and they said, we had a meeting set up their head, or we were trying to set up a meeting with their, their headquarters. We were really excited about it. It was, it was a good opportunity. And then they came back and just said that they didn't want to focus right now on brand awareness. Um, and they didn't want to spend money on brand awareness. Well, I was like, well, that stinks. And I was like, well, we lost that lead. And... Uh, Maybe they'll call us back one day. I don't know. Um, and my sales guy said, I'm not done. And <laughs> he turns around. He calls them back up. And he, and he actually offered them. He says, I understand that you're not looking for brand awareness, but we would love to still educate you on how 
PPC um, just educate you on how PPC can help you in other areas beyond brand awareness and then that way you can all and, and, and still present to you some numbers so you can have those numbers ready uh, for when you are ready to make a decision and then turn around and said can we still set a meeting and we end up getting a meeting with the top executives when we weren't speaking with the top executive at that time we actually have a meeting actually Monday morning <laughs> with uh, the top executive to go over and present all this information to them even though they said that they weren't interested and this is going to allow us another opportunity to still try and um, sell them what they need because now we understand and that's that part of listening we understand they don't they don't want the brand recognition they want to get people into the stores with their campaign so that's going to be our focus of our entire presentation is not just let's build your brand so people know who you are but we know when we walk in there we're going to go ahead and sell the idea of how do we get people to show up at their store and so that just changes the way i do my ppc strategy i'm going to pull out any kind of brand pieces and just focus on the pieces that generate the uh, direct conversions um, and so i thought that was really interesting and and so from that kind of a way you can offer education so yes oh sorry ppc is pay uh, pay per click so google ads facebook ads uh, any kind of advertising that uh, you'll click on to get to your site um, so you can offer education um, that's that's the biggest way to do it so when they say no say well oh, that's awesome uh, well can we still at least educate you on it um, because that allows them to learn a little bit more about it because sometimes people say no because they're scared and they don't know what it is and so educating them on it may make them a little bit more opened up to it uh, you can go the route of talking to somebody else um, be very careful with this because if you uh, if they know that you know you or they, they assign someone to talk and you go over their head it could turn out bad but if you're talking to one person and you know somebody else there maybe talk to them as well right um, ask them when a better time is right um, this is really for me this is this works out because we get a lot of people who just say yeah it's just I'm it's not the time and so when I ask them what's a better time it kind of puts them on a commitment to set a time they're like oh, well I mean it's I mean it's the summer the kids are out of school um, I, um, can, can we set something for maybe September can you call me back in September and so that at least now gets you a reason when you call back in September to say, hey, I'm giving you a call back. You uh, asked me to call you back in September and talk to you about this. And so that kind of helps, um, kind of forces them to give you a timeline so you're not overly annoying them. Because if they don't tell you what a better time is, you don't want to call them in a month and it's actually a worse time than just say, stop calling me. So it's a great way to set a, a, a future time. And then in your CRM, which again, we'll talk about that in a second, that's going to allow you to put a, a note to make sure you do reach back out to them. Um, contact, them contact them back at a later time. I think that's a duplicate of what I just said. Um, and then add them to a drip campaign. Um, so what we actually will do sometimes is we'll take certain clients that we'll put them in our nurturing campaign, which is where every once in a while we'll send out a couple marketing tips and everything through email to them. Uh, it's a very simple, we actually have it above the fold that says unsubscribe. So if they don't want those, they can get out of there. Make sure that's the key. Do not <laughs> overly annoy them, right? Um, but we have it where just every couple weeks it still drops something over to them um, that just talks to them and tells them a little bit about some marketing stuff and, and, and ways they can digitally market their business. And that way they still keep remembering who we are and they don't forget who we are down the road so that if they do end up needing something down the road, hopefully they remember who we are. And then <clears throat> simply, you may not be the person for them. Um, in that case, you uh, still want to try to build that relationship. Um, you know, don't push a product on them that they don't need. So if you look at them and go, really, I don't have anything that's going to help what you need. I had a guy who actually thought he needed digital marketing, but when we talked to him, he wanted us to completely rebuild uh, he had a warehouse solution and he needed some kind of, I even forget what the name of the system, the type of system is, but it was a very complex software system to track and it plugged in literally to the manufacturing machines in the warehouse to track the performance of the machines. And, all. and I'm like, this is software development. This isn't web development. This is not what we do. And rather than try to push one of our products on him, 
I made sure he understood what kind of work that we did. And then I actually gave him a couple references of people I knew who were in the software development business and said, these people might be able to help you with what you're looking for. And then send him on his way. And by doing that, um, the guy did not, the guy has stayed in touch. He has reached out to me before and had us do a couple small things for him because we didn't try to push products on him at the time that he need, that he didn't need. Because his, his pain point at that time was his soft, custom software solution that we couldn't, put, uh, we couldn't do for him. And then <coughs> the sales tools, right? <laughs> this isn't a digital one. This is still print. And a lot of people go, but you're all about digital. Why would you say this? Business cards. Business cards are still, um, still a big thing. Um, I carry them with me everywhere I go. Sometimes I always kind of forget as well. But usually they're in my pocket. I'm ready to hand them out. Um, these are great to have to hand out to people at all times. Um, it, 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 you know, most of them are going to probably throw them away, but you will get a few people who do contact you from them still. So having those because you can then quickly hand them out. Because the other thing I find at networking events and events like this is somebody's on their way to something else. They got to run to something, and so they run up to you and say, "Hey, I don't have time to talk. Do you have a business card you can throw me real quick?" And they run off with your business card. And um, you have no idea what they even wanted, um, but they run off your business card and they usually contact you um, a little bit later. So make sure you always have that on you um, and you have something you know, printed up that has your information on it. Um, and then we wanna talk about CRMs, right? So the biggest thing you wanna do is you wanna track everything with the CRM. Uh, this is extremely important um, to log all notes, all information on every single lead that you have. Um, while you think that your brain is a sealed trap, you will forget things, um, especially as you get older. I'm starting to learn that. Uh, happens a lot. Um, you will, so what we do is we, we actually use Zoho CRM. Um, I, they do have a free version, and then they have a paid version. Um, I think all of these have a, I don't know if Close.io. I don't think Close.io has a free version, but all their other ones have a free version. I mean, they have paid upgrades and stuff like that. Um, we use these to track everything with everybody. And so when I talked about earlier, you writing down the notes on those cards, get back to your hotel room or go back home or wherever. When you get back, make sure that whenever you schedule any kind of networking event, that you've scheduled time when you get back home to sit down for 20, 30 minutes and log all of these people into your CRM because you have fresh knowledge of talking to them. And so those little keywords that you put on that card you will hopefully still be able to remember what you just had a conversation with them about, and you can put that in the notes and fill out the whole notes field. Because I've gone to make calls before, and having all of those notes from that initial conversation is amazing. And then having every single note from every single other call is great. And then the other cool thing is our system um, actually automatically tracks emails, and most of them you can actually have a BCC line that you can put in there. And so all emails you send with that client are tracked. Um, our system actually does, um, the Zoho CRM uh, system integrates with our Gmail, and I think HubSpot may as well, I don't know about uh, Bittrex, but it actually pulls not every email that I sent, but every email that anybody in our organization has sent. And I can see every email that everybody in our organization has sent back and forth to that client, so I can also see if somebody else is having a conversation with him at the same time, and um, be like, oh, okay, well, you know, Sandy's already handling this, so I'm not gonna bother. Um, or I can pick up where she left off. Um, and so it's nice to know other conversations that were had and what they talked about. So just make sure all those are getting logged into a CRM. Um, and these are, these are some of the ones I recommend that are, they all have free versions. Like I said, I don't know about close.io if it has a free version, but uh, these are all really good tools. Uh, with these, sign up for the trials. Well, they're free to start. Uh, sign up, play around with them, see if they do what you need, and if they don't, move on to the next one. Um, these tools all are a little bit different, and you want to find the best one for you. And then the last uh, tool I want to talk about is writing good proposals. Um, so once you've had all these conversations, you want to send them everything written out in a nice scope of work with a price on it. There's a couple really great tools to do this. Uh, we use Proposify. Uh, Pandadocs is like almost an exact copy or maybe Proposify copied Pandadocs. 
they're both very similar uh, the way they work. They have eSign, they have abilities for templates and all that. Um, Google Docs is a little bit, is a free method. Uh, these other ones do not have a free version. Pandadocs, Proposify, and I don't think Quiller does either. Google Docs is a free version, uh, but you will need an eSign component. Um, and usually, um, I think there's HelloSign is one that's out there, um, DocuSign. So there's a couple of those you can look up as well, and those allow you to do e-signatures um, to get them to sign off on a quote. Um, but you can do those as well uh, through Google Docs if you want for a, for, for a cheaper option. Send everything as a PDF. Don't ever send it as a document that they can edit. Um, send it over as a PDF and have the digital signatures on it so that you can have a copy and you can make it very easy for them to sign. The key is to make it so they can accept the proposal as, eas uh, as easily as possible and don't make a lot of steps to it. Um, what we often do is we'll send over the proposal, we'll wait a couple days if they haven't, um, we, uh, actually with Pros Proposify I can actually see, uh, and same with Pandadocs, you can actually see exactly what they've read and how much time they've spent on individual pages within the proposal, which is kind of cool. So you can see how many times they've opened it, where they're getting stuck. Um, sadly, most of the people that we send proposals to skip over the scope of work, go straight to the price section, and then go down to the contract section. Um, which is really bad because that means they didn't actually look at the scope of work. So they're going to maybe be a client later that says, oh, I didn't know that wasn't in the scope of work. Um, so you can see and sometimes know where to have a conversation with them from that as well. Uh, but yeah, I, I would, I would uh, say you want to make sure your proposal is well written. Um, our proposals are about normally about 16 pages long. Um, and they include information about our team has our contract in it, um, and then also has the pricing and the uh, scope of work well defined, um, which is a whole different talk. But uh, you want to like, make sure that that's all defined in that proposal so that they can see it. Don't just email them over, you know, oh, that's going to cost five grand to build that, and that's all you send them. Make sure everything's detailed out and looks professional. Um, even as a freelancer, um, it's going to really help you close those deals. So for uh, this talk, that's all I have. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me. Uh, there's our website. It's got a lot of blog articles related to this on it. Um, and I will take questions now. Yes? Have you read a, a Lean Dr. Jones? What happened? Have you read that book, uh, Lean Dr. Jones? Well, and a lot of these books are kind of like the Oh, yeah. No, I haven't, I haven't read that book. No. What is, what's the book called? Uh, when, without pitching. when Without Pitching. Who's it by? Uh, Blair Ends. Blair Ends? Yeah. Okay. So, I haven't read it, but it sounds like a good book. It's very, so, it's very yeah. yeah I'll, have to, I'll have to pick it up and read it. Yes, sir. To the Wedge? Yes. Yes, I'll be there. Huh? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm scared the whole time I'm in a camp, but I, I go to enough of them, I, f I figured it out. <laughs> yes, ma'am. He's, he's the extrovert that, yes. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, in the back first. <clears throat> um, I think more beyond resources is just uh, more just kind of what I like to do is I like to, so the reason I give talks, I've given now hmm, probably over 50 different talks. Um, at different camps and stuff. And the reason I started giving talks is because it scared me to death. Um, it still makes me nervous. Like, I don't know if you can tell, I'm sweating a little bit. It still makes me nervous uh, getting up in front of a big group of uh, people even even now. But um, nothing like, I mean, when I first did it, I was shivering. I had to hold on to the, the podium when I gave my first talk. Um, and I did it because it scared me. Um, and I think that's really the thing is just find it, but make sure you do it on something that you absolutely love and you're passionate about because if you try to do it on something that you don't know that you just you read something else and you're trying to
copy their presentation or copy what they did, you're going to mess up. But if you do it on something that you, that you know and love and you're passionate about, it's something that you're going to be able, because it's, it's, it's second nature to you, you're going to be able to go back to it. Um, you know, and then there's different things, you know, look over the heads if you want. Um, you know, I, it took me a while to get to the point now I actually, you know, have points. I actually have points set in this room right now when I was talking of, you know, people I keep looking around to. Um, so I, I keep looking around. But when I first started, I couldn't look at faces. So if I looked at faces, I would freeze up and I wouldn't know what to do. So I would just kind of like look like this and never, never actually look anybody in the eye um, in the room. So that's kind of my suggestion is just really just find a place. Uh, word camps are amazing. Um, maybe if a word camp's too big, uh, your local meetup, start there. Um, and just find something to get up in front of people and just talk about. And I think that it helps you along the way get a little bit easier. It gets a little easier to, to sell the things. We had a question over here. So I bring them up pretty much right away. I come back and I kind of give them a summary because a lot of times I find, you know, when you meet them at a networking event, they're like four drinks in. They're going to tell you everything. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so I bring back up the pain points of their business. They go into pain points of other things. That's, we're not going to bring that up. But, <laughs> but you know, um, I go into those like right away and I kind of give them a recap of what we talked about at that event and I say, you know, hey, when we were there, you were uh, telling me that you're having a lot of, you were having a lot of issues with, you know, this and this and, uh, you know, we talked about some different solutions and ways that we can help and I kind of want to get you on the call and so we can kind of go over this as well again and just, you know, see how we can go ahead and make this happen for you so that we can help you get into it and I always use the word help, I never say sell, so we can help you get into a better position and help your business grow. Make it about them and not about you. All right. Yes, sir. Yes. I, it, was, it was one of those I was like, I don't want to put this in because it's a little creepy, but at the same time, it, it works really well. And I haven't had anyone yet kind of go, get away from me, weirdo. You know, like, so. Yes. Yeah, and, and like I said, when they're they're they're, all, they're receptive because they're at a networking event. That's what they're there to do. So they don't normally have a major issue. Now, if you're out to dinner with, you know, your significant other, and there's a table over here having a private conversation, and you're listening, and you go walk up, pull up a chair, and sit down at their table, that's <laughs> going to get a little weird, um, and they may tell you to leave at that point. But the networking event, they're normally pretty open. They're pretty pretty much like, yeah, sure, let's 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 talk about it. So. Are there any other questions? All right. Well, I'll be here uh, the rest of today and tomorrow, mostly hanging around the uh, GoDaddy Pro booth. Uh, so if you've got any questions, you'll find me usually in that area, or you'll find me hiding in some corner somewhere. Uh, so if you've got any questions, come find me, and uh, we'd love to talk to you and see how we can help you.